Okay, so I'm a bit of a gamer. And throughout my gaming career, I've noticed that some games do a very good first level. Uh, in some games, do not. And among the games that do not do a very good first level, most of them suffer from what I call too much emphasis on atmosphere and not replayability. Or, Timirner. 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 For short. Uh, so I've compiled some examples of games that are objectively really good, but have first levels that either really drag or offer zero replayability. I think that the genre most offensive to this would be survival horror, or just like horror in general, because there's such an emphasis on immersion and tension building that they sometimes sacrifice like actual fun gameplay at the beginning, you know, for like cheap thrills and scares and mystery. <sighs> Because, you know, once the, the leash is sort of taken off, the game will become less scary just naturally once you gain control. Um, some honorable mentions of games that I would like to mention, though, at the very beginning here is Dead Space, uh, at least the remake. Uh, because it's a little draggy at the beginning, you know, there's like that long, unskippable cutscene of you guys like flying into the fucking Ishimura and whatnot. Uh, and you just kind of like follow the lads around for a bit until like shit hits the fan. But, you know less than 10 minutes you know once you get your gun and the fucking gloves are off it's ass kicking time until the fucking game's over like that game is so fucking good but you know ma you know for like the first eight minutes it's just kind of a walk you know a walk in the simulator but that's fine uh the other mention i would like to uh, uh mention is way fucking worse than uh dead space by a lot it's alan wake 2 uh, the first two hours of this game are just a walking simulator. It's you walking through a forest as a naked man, and then you walking through a forest as the FBI agent, and it's way too late into the game before you even encounter your first fucking enemy to, like, fight. Alright, I get the game was going for, like, a sleuth vibe with its clue finding and puzzle collecting, but in my opinion, it doesn't even do that right. Either because you don't even actually piece the clues together, as in you, the player. You just sort of collect them, and then the game just sort of shoehorns together what the character, fi you know, figures out. It's just not fun gameplay. It's like the game is forcing you to play a movie. A movie in which you don't actually have any control in, in the slightest. Like, it's not like decisions you make or how you piece the clues together affect the story. It may seem like that in a meta way, but... It doesn't actually affect anything. The game still tells a very linear story. Anyway, uh, like I said before, on a first playthrough, all right, Alan Wake 2 does build good atmosphere, and it begs very interesting questions that you want to see answered. But on a replay through or like a new game plus, it just falls really sharply. Um, so with those two honorable mentions out of the way, uh, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video. Up first is one of my personal favorite games of all time, and one of the best survival horror games of all time, The Evil Within. The Evil Within arguably suffers from more than just tim uh, since technically I'm including Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, but you get it. Uh, the first level opens with the massacre at Beacon, uh, also spoiler warning for like all of the games I'm going to talk about. Anyway, uh, and after that, you get teleported away and locked in the basement. You have to escape. You gotta play hide and seek, your leg's injured the whole time, <sighs> then finally you get your pistol and shit starts to pick up. Now, on a first playthrough, this does so much to world build. And you think the game is trying to teach you useful skills, you know, like the kind of learn by doing sort of mentality, you know? Think you're gonna t take all this knowledge and utilize it throughout the rest of the game. You know, kind of like how At Outlast teaches you to like play hide and seek, sort of like hiding in lockers and under beds and shit. Um, this game does that too. But you really don't need any of that. As a matter of fact, not only do you need to use any of the hiding mechanics the game teaches you at the beginning, but in my opinion, the game is less fun if you choose to play it this way. So once you play this game on your second playthrough and you already have your playstyle figured out, the first two chapters can really start to drag the experience down since you can't skip it and you can't use any of your new game plus loop until you pick up your first pistol halfway through the second chapter. And if you're me and have beaten this game like two dozen times, this part really, really does start to drag, even though it's such a good game. Now, onto another game I've beaten two dozen times with one of the best starting chapters to a survival horror game or just a game in general, 
Oh, and it's also probably the second greatest game ever made. The original, emphasis on original, Resident Evil 4. Now, what's to say about the original Resident Evil 4 that hasn't already been said? Great gameplay, great graphics for the time, and honestly, in my opinion, they still hold up. Great plot, greater characters, and some of the best gameplay that still shits on modern games today. Alright, it invented and revolutionized third-person shooters and the survival horror franchise as a whole, truly deserving of the second greatest game of all time. The opening cutscene sums up all of the previous Resident Evils for the new fans, introduces the gameplay in a fluid and natural way. There's technically a tutorial, but it's really just a manual that you can read in the game, but it's, you can skip it. See, the game eases you in with a few enemies at a time, and then it just opens the motherfucking floodgates, okay? I mean, it builds tension and atmosphere without taking away power from the player, and it immediately makes you feel in over your head, alright? Exactly how Leon, the character, feels in the moment. You know, going from, you know, shooting just a couple of groups of enemies at the beginning of the game, to just, oh shit, you're in the middle of this village and swarms of them are coming at you, and then, oh shit, there's a chainsaw. I mean, it's... It's brilliant, alright? And never once does it drag. You know, on a New Game Plus run or just a replay through in general, you get your New Game Plus loot as soon as you take control of Leon. So it's immediately rewarding on a New Game Plus run instead of feeling like you have to play a walking simulator for the first 30 minutes of the game. Just perfect. Speaking of the second greatest game ever made, time for the first. Ocarina of Time is without a doubt, unequivocally, the greatest game ever made. Ignoring all of the shortcomings that you could argue date the game, it's perfect, especially the first level slash area. The story, the gameplay, the puzzles, the characters, the art design, the levels! I could go on for days about how much I love this game. And before you say some gay shit like, Eh, you're just gonna stone your blood. I'm not, alright? I play this game like twice a year, and it never gets old, okay? Now enough gushing about it, let's talk about the first area. The game opens with some pretty long, unskippable cutscenes, alright? But ignoring that, it immediately gives you your tasks. Get a sword, get a shield. The game encourages you to explore the area and talk to the Kakiris in order to learn some of the controls. Upon a second playthrough, you can ignore all that Go straight to the Kikiri sword, run through the grass for like five minutes, and buy the shield. Go tell Mido he's a fa- And boom! You're in the first dungeon. And in my opinion, one of the best dungeons in the Zelda franchise, but I'll save that for another day. It's exactly what you'd want for a first level. It builds an atmosphere, okay? And it character builds, and it lore builds, alright? The location is beautiful, the gameplay is fun, and it encourages you to learn by doing. Breath of the Wild, a game I do not like for a myriad of reasons, like the durability, the stamina meters, the shitty cell-shaded graphics, mid-characters, etc. Uh, it's a game I was originally going to make the good Zelda game for the first area, because I, for some reason, remembered this game having like a much shorter first area, and you being able to practically set out and kill Ganon immediately. Unfortunately, that's not actually the case. You see, you have to discover your first tower and complete your four shrines before you can actually set off on your actual adventure. When I was gathering footage for these games, it took me about 15 minutes to get all of the other games' like, first areas, um, but Breath of the Wild and Alan Wake took an hour each. All right, Now you can argue Ocarina of Time is slow and draggy, but you gotta remember, that game was the first of its kind. Okay, there hadn't been very many third-person adventure games, so they had to introduce very new concepts to people to get used to, like Z-targeting, aiming with a joystick, 3D cutscenes, you know? Those were all new on the market, so like, the protocol for how to do those things wasn't really set in stone yet. But for Breath of the Wild, all those things are set in stone, okay? Breath of the Wild takes four times as long to open up in its self-proclaimed most open world Zelda game of all time. It's bullshit, all right? And as a Zelda fan, it scares me that that's the direction the franchise is going in. 
but I digress. Ocarina of Time opens up into Hyrule Field in the first 15 to 30 minutes, okay? And that's mostly including long, unskippable cutscene. The first area and the Great Deku Tree combined, if you're a good player, takes half an hour. Breath of the Wild takes an hour before you hang glide your way into Hyrule Field. An hour! Breath of the Wild takes an hour before you get to Hyrule Field. <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting worked up. Anyway, those are my two examples. And now, for the third best game ever made. Actually, the third best franchise ever made. You know, I didn't intend for this to be a ranking list, but you know what, here we are, all right? Halo Combat Evolved. Combat Evolved is easily the greatest opening to a video game, all right? I mean, the way the game opens to the world building within the level, all right? The way the, the level teaches you the controls throughout it, it's perfect. And really, the only tutorial it has is like the scientist bro, asking you if you need to invert your controls or not. And even then, like on Heroic and Legendary, this part is skipped. Oh, and the opening cutscene. Oh, it's beautiful. And while not as egregiously long as like Ocarina of Time, it's completely skippable. It's just perfect and it's simple, all right? The game introduces the controls through playing the level, all right? Meleeing, shooting, punching, throwing grenades. On a first playthrough, it teaches you. But on a subsequent playthrough, it's just fun and smooth level design, all right? Nothing hinders or drags. Plus, the last level is the first level, but backwards. I mean, oh, and the flutter there, and there's a, a warthog run. I could talk hours about how Pillar of Autumn is perfect. And frankly, I could talk about how great Cairo Station is as well, the first level of Halo 2. Both are great for exactly the same reasons. I mean, Sierra 117 is a great level, but in my opinion, it's not as perfect as Cairo Station or Pillar of Autumn is. You know, and was with as replayable as the Halo franchise is, you know, you really need emphasis on really good opening levels so that the game never feels stale, you know? And I'd say most of the Halos do follow that rule. But, as absolutely legendary as Halo Reach is, you know, one of the greatest games ever made, I think Winter Contingency, the first level of Halo Reach, might be one of the worst levels in the franchise. Now you gotta remember, when I mention the Halo franchise, I'm absolutely not including Halo 5 or Infinite, and I rarely include Halo 4. That one is still, that's still on my naughty list, but, you know, maybe in hindsight I was, I was too harsh on that one, alright? They're still really bad, and they do get progressively worse, but... For right now, we're talking about the core Halos, all right? The game does a wonderful job of world building, and it is very epic on a first playthrough, like all of these levels are. But upon a replay, it really, it really, you guessed it, it kind of drags, all right? <sighs> Excuse me. I do have some issues with this game. I don't think it's as perfect as the rest of them. Um, an example of this is like at the very beginning of the game in this level like the Visegrad relay gets taken out and then everyone's like oh it's probably the insurrectionists and like no one like once guesses that it could be the Covenant like why not like they like they've been at war with the Covenant canonically for like 25 years at this point like I understand like the idea is like oh no way the Covenant can pull that on reach but also like why couldn't they have They've already fully invaded and glassed several other planets. Like, I don't know, you can only use hubris as a plot point so many times before it becomes a bit of a cliche. But I suppose seeing as Reach did retcon a lot as far as the lore and Halo between like the books and the games, it was nice kind of seeing that they mentioned the insurrection in a game instead of just the books. Anyway, I don't know, the, the first part of the level is you looking at these missing troopers playing dumb as if the audience doesn't already know that it's the Covenant. Like, I understand the characters don't don't know that, but, like, we do. So, like, don't make us play through their revelation when we already know the twist. 
I mean, it builds a nice atmosphere, um, but not being able to do anything cool for, like, the first three quarters of this level is cringe. Like, especially compared to the rest of the game, which picks up significantly. Um, the setting is nice. I like the rolling green hills and the waterfall. But then on the later later half of this level, like, you get on a fucking uh, falcon, and then you just get, like, you know, railroaded to this other location where then you have to, like, wait on Cat to close a door while you hold off a couple of jackals and some grunts. And then it's you walking through this dark corridor for, like, two minutes. I don't know. It's just... I'm not a fan of this level, and maybe I'm biased. I don't know. But it just it feels very draggy, you know? Um, I do think that Winter Contingency is the least guilty of all of these, uh, you know, first level syndrome levels because, you know, it's, it's really only the first half that sucks, you know? And the overall level length is short. Like, it's not a long level. And I've beaten Reach on Lasso, so it is pretty easy even on Lasso, you know? So... But from a fun aspect, I just don't think that this level quite reaches, pun intended, uh, the magnitude of all the other Halo first levels. Um, and controversially, I even think that Halo's 4 starting level might be more fun. And I do fucking hate Halo 4, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, in short, there's a particular brand or genre of starting levels that are superb, you know, and some that are, are not, and drag, and are kind of boring. These were just a few examples of games that I, I absolutely love, right? Not Breath of the Wild, but the rest of them, I think are perfect, alright? You know, some of them have better openers than other, and I just, I thought this was a very interesting phenomenon that I've, I've sort of noticed, so... I'm just kind of putting this out there. I'm hoping that other people will pick up on this and maybe do examples of games that they love and are good games, but just kind of open kind of poorly or could have opened better. You know, I'm just kind of, I'm bringing this out, you know, hopefully start a discussion. Um, you know, hopefully this will pick up and, you know, maybe I'll, I'll be open to doing a part two in the future. Um, it's going to be hard coming up with some examples because, you know, there's plenty of examples that of games that are shit and have shit first levels. And there's plenty of examples of games that are shit, but maybe have a good first level. Um, and maybe I'll do a video on that too, but it's just, it's pretty hard to find a game that's really good, but just kind of opens poorly. But, um, you know, this was my video. Um, I appreciate you for watching. Um, if you decide to make a video of your own, please, like, tag me or, like, mention me in it, you know, just so I can, so I can watch it, you know, because I would really love to see some more examples of this. And I'd love to discuss this topic, um, more in depth, um... I don't really know how to end this video, other than, like, thanks for watching, like, and shit like that. Make a comment. Um, so anyway, uh, something came in the mail today. <laughs>